Afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay. I'm on the Ryobi Public Relations team here at the Innovation Center in Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, you know, as Brett mentioned, I really love working here. I love being at the forefront of our helping bring our new product development out into the public eye and then being available for all of you fine folks to purchase at the Home Depot. And, you know, let's head inside. There's a lot of exciting things we're going to see. Learn Welcome to Ryobi. Everybody, we have something extremely special for you today. We're actually at the TTI Innovation Center in Anderson, South Carolina, and we're also bringing in the Ryobi Rebels and Ryobi Freaks. You didn't believe it, but it's actually happening. So check this out. We actually have Jason. You know who he is. You don't need to know who that guy is. No introduction. <laughs> we know who this big guy is. And then we have Jay Sarkar. He's going to be taking us through the whole tour today. And as you can see right here, their branding is on point and we have everything that you're going to be seeing through the day. So stick with us. This is going to be awesome. Let's go. Welcome to the TTI Innovation Center. We opened up on this campus in summer of 2019. We have this building right here and then we also have the TTI Power Center, which you pass by just down the hill. That is where we do our lawnmower assembly. We currently build six Ryobi models in that mower plant. And then here in the Innovation Center, this is where all that comes from. As the sign behind you says, leading the revolution from traditional power sources to our cordless technology. So, I know the answer is kind of hidden behind me, but can anyone tell me when Ryobi OnePlus 4 will launch? That is correct, Michael. Thank you. Yep, so 1996. And as you guys know, our commitment to the end user has stretched over the last 26 years. So any of those NICAD batteries that run our original blue drill, our original blue reciprocating saw, that's going to work in a brand new Ryobi One Plus brad handler, Ryobi One Plus HP multi-tool, even our new stick map that just came out this year. That backwards and forwards compatibility is at the core of everything that we do with our customers. We do not want to leave anyone behind. We know that some brands will switch their battery foot or switch their battery integration platform, but for us, we want to keep the user at the forefront. Now, I think one of the coolest things about working for this company is that when I started in 2019 working in a Home Depot like many of our folks in the field do, we had banners up that said that we had over 125 plus 18 volt one plus tools. In early 2022, we are now at over 260 plus cordless solutions on that 18 volt one plus line. And then on the 40 volt line, we're at over 75 plus solutions. And then of course, we have the piece de la resistance, our 80 volt HP first ever lithium electric zero turn mower. These you can find at most Home Depot stores around the country as well as on homedepot.com. So really, I think the cool story of Ryobi, especially over the last few years, is that we really went from just focusing and making sure we had that backwards compatibility and having products people could use to focusing on our end user verticals. So now it's not about, oh, someone who is shopping for Ryobi 18 volt one plus, they want that drill and circ saw so they need projects from the garage. It's the hobby craft and maker. It's someone who is you know, creating different costumes or even we launched a pumpkin carving kit recently. Someone who wants to have that really unique design for their pumpkin carving as we head into the fall. It is the shade tree mechanic. Someone who might be working on their old classic car as a pickup truck on the weekend. They're using our impact wrenches, our extended reach ratchets, some of the other automotive solutions we provide. And then as you look around, there's just so many different verticals that we identify with, as well as expansion as well. But I still think the most significant thing that we've done over the last few years is, of course, this sticker that you see on six of our walk behind the lawnmowers right here. Starting at the end of 2020, early 2021, we started producing two mowers here in the United States. That number is now up to six. And by the end of 2022, we will be at over 500,000 walk behind lawnmowers built right here in Anderson County, South Carolina. That is something that everyone on this campus takes immense pride in across all business units and something that we do hope to expand in the future. So as we take a look over here, we can see a bit of the progression of our 18 volt one plus battery platform. So we start with our original 18 volt NICAD battery. I know there are some folks who still utilize these to this very day. I think it's awesome to see that we've got batteries that are almost as old as I am, that people are still operating every day with their power tools. You can see that we moved up. 2007 was when we switched over to that lithium green that everyone here loves so much. And then as we progress from there, you can really see how our battery technology took a step up. So we started with lithium 18 volt, moved up to lithium 18 volt plus, 
2010 is also when we launched our first outdoor power equipment. So that was four models in 2010 that we came out with on the 18 volt line. 40 volt started in 2014. So in just eight years, we've seen that 40 volt line go from launching to over 75 solutions that we can provide to our consumers. And then as you make your way up the list, you really see the different expansions that we have. 2020, of course, was huge when we launched our 18 volt one plus HP, starting with the compact series. And then 2021, we launched the 18 volt one plus HP full size series. And then as we look towards the future, anything is possible. And we're really excited about what the future holds for us here at Ryobi. And then up here, we have just a selection of some of our newer products that we've launched. Some ones that we've had some great responses on are our hobby craft and maker solutions. So that was our new rotary tools, our new USB lithium wood carver, as well as some of the other woodworking tools that we have for that user vertical. Our new 18 volt one plus HP brushless stick back. People have been raving about that one. We're super excited that it's widely available. And then also getting into some of our outdoor power equipment solutions. As y'all know, our Whisper series, of course, is our most powerful yet quietest solution. This is our 40 volt HP 17 inch dedicated string trimmer. We will learn a little bit more later in the tour about the amount of engineering that went into this and machine making it the quietest solution we can offer. But the coolest thing that we do here in this building is we take our user feedback. We want to go out to you guys and find out whether you're reviewing the tool on VOBTools.com, you're posting in a Facebook group. We want to know what you love about our products and maybe there's an area that we can make it even better for our users as we continue to develop and generate our new products for our end users. So that's kind of the story that we have behind Ryobi and we are really excited to be able to kind of walk you guys from the conception process all the way through the manufacturing process today. <laughs> Well, hold on. We have to actually take a step back. Be on the point of the security checkpoint for the Innovation Center, I was not able to take pictures nor video. So the first place that we went was actually the Battery Innovation Center, and this is the battery test lab for Ryobi. A lot goes on in this area. And I think that you're really going to appreciate some of the things that they do there. When you walk in to paint a picture, they have many, 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 many batteries set up, and it could be a hundred, I'm not really sure. But what they're doing is testing the batteries through cycles, charge, discharge. Ryobi is doing it in a way that they have a team of engineers that are really specifying all the little things that could happen. We're gonna look at three different types of batteries here. We're gonna go through some generations real quick. If you look at this battery, this battery is famous for cracking on the stem. Now, from what my understanding is, that's just a weakness in the types of plastic. So as they went to the next generation, this is a lithium plus battery. I've had it for many years. You go to this battery here, they've changed the chemistry for some of the casings. And you see that really none of these have cracked because they've fixed the problem. They've listened to the issues that came up and they fixed it. Now, this is the lithium plus HP. So they improve from here to here. Now... Here's a couple of really cool things that you're going to notice. This is a six, six amp hour battery. This is a six amp hour battery. They're using different cells. So they understood that with going with a smaller cell, still being able to deliver the same power, that they can make it a little bit smaller. But if you look at these batteries, you know, they're not the same. Um, I don't have rubber over molding here. I do here. And what I really think that you're going to see from that, if you take a look right here, you're going to see some little bitty holes. Now, I've been to other tool manufacturer areas, and what we're seeing with lithium ion is that the batteries, they heat and they cool. They heat and they cool. When you charge them, they heat and they cool. It's gonna create condensation inside here. Well, those little holes are weep holes, and that actually gets the water out. In doing research, they found that if you have a sealed battery completely like this, and then you have some areas where water can get in, or if it's heating and cooling so rapidly without proper insulation, well, you're gonna get that moisture and it's gonna come in, so you gotta get the moisture out. If you leave the moisture in on some of these, well, you're gonna have corrosion, you're gonna have rust, you're gonna have some things you really don't want to have on these cells and on the connections, and especially, these all have electronics built into them, so you wanna get that out. So, it was really cool to see that they keep evolving, and that's the story I'm trying to tell is, we evolved from here, we've evolved here, we've evolved here. This is really cool to see the innovation, what they've done. 
the types of plastics, the material, the chemistry. So the next place that we went is the Tool Innovation and Design Center. Now this is where you have all the industrial engineers, the tool designers, power tool designers, and they were, exp they were able to explain the way how they design from concept to refining, to modeling, to make sure that you go from a digital model and some other 3D printed models to the final tool. Now what we found is very interesting is that they, they, they don't do this in a vacuum. They actually do this with the customer in mind. When they do that with the customer in mind, they have the customer input. So some of the things that they do is they create a mock-up and that's a form and fit just to see how big it is. And then they take it back and they put it into 3D design and they're able to take that through and create 3D models. Now with the 3D model, you're gonna see how it actually fits. You know, you gotta keep in mind your motors, your electronics, how is it actually going to connect to the battery. There's a lot that goes into it. But once they get a working model in hand, they're gonna put it back into the end user's hands and they're gonna say, let's work on this. How does it feel? Does it get the job done? And that's the most important thing. It actually has to get the job done. And it has to do it in a way that is productive and it's not working against the end user. So with that being said, you actually have to take a trip. We went from there and that was really cool because that wasn't just power tools, right? That was everything. But to see that concept that we learned about, we actually saw some of it. We didn't go back into the engineering areas. We just were in kind of like a conference room for your area. We went to another place called the advanced testing area. Now, once you get through the phase of designing a tool, well, you need to go through advanced testing. That has a lot to do with harmonics, you know, vibration, frequencies. You actually have to see how it feels in users' hands. Like this right here, this is the hammer drill. This is the biggest one they have. But if you see these ribs right here, it moves. And that's easy to see that it moves because you're trying to isolate some of those vibrations. So I'll just take this battery, we'll put it in. Being that it's a super powerful tool, you need to be able to protect your hands. So they're gonna be able to see how this actually affects the user when they're using it. Where's that vibration come from? How does it affect the user? Noise, they gotta see where the noise comes from, how it affects the user if it's out in front of them, up above them. You know, really is it generated from? How can they mitigate some of that? But you know what? I say this like it's a big top secret. Not a lot of people pay attention to it, but every tool manufacturer does this. So one of the things that Ryobi has for them is that they have a very educated, advanced educated engineering team when they do the testing. And they have a well-rounded background so that they can do this in a manner that really helps the end user. Now. Think about this, this is not a professional line of tools, these are still homeowner line of tools. So you're getting the same type of testing and things as you would a professional line of tools, and I think that's what puts the feather in Ryobi's cap. We actually followed this up with a really cool lunch where we met with department heads. Whenever we met with the department heads, we were able to discuss so much. A lot of the questions that we asked you all, what would you ask Ryobi if you had an opportunity to? One of the big questions that I asked was, are we going to expand the 40 volt line? And some of the bigger tools, some of the big power hungry tools, like the 10 inch sliding miter saw, that's a power hungry tool. Right now it's a single 18 volt HP battery. So it runs off of one of these. Now it's a really power hungry tool. I'm not saying it doesn't do well, but I think with a 40 volt battery, it would do that much better. Not all. I actually asked about the table saw as well. I think right now they do an eight and a half inch blade in the table saw. I think it would really accelerate if we're able to put the 40 volt batteries in there. They listen to me. Do I think it's gonna happen? <laughs> Probably not. But I'm asking the questions because these are a lot of questions that I got asked. So they were so cool that they actually did an impromptu demonstration. So from that area where we were, we actually went outside, you know, we finished up lunch and they had an 80 volt mower sitting out there for everyone to test, to just rip it up in the parking lot. And I'll tell you what, it was a great time. Everyone... We're going to the Home Depot. Yeah. All right guys, we're at the manufacturing facility. I want you to take a look at how long this thing is. It just keeps going. Going, 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 going. 
This is over a million square feet of manufacturing space. This is absolutely amazing. This building is huge. Look at the storage that they have. The, the actual shelves are angled so they can stack for efficiency of space. It's massive. Check this thing out. They actually have the reconditioned tools for direct tools here as well. Check this out, man. They do everything in this building. Now, as we go down the assembly line, this is where they create the lawn mowers. I tell you what, this is absolutely awesome. They're Ryobi is putting people to work because people can think and make changes on the move. They have quality control that's here all the time, watching them, supporting them, making sure that they have it. Now, this is absolutely amazing. They automate so that whenever they actually put the mower together, look at that big arm, man. They're stacking the mowers perfectly so it's palletized, it's ready to go. We're not breaking people's back, they're putting it together. Now, here's a cool fact. This factory produces 650 mowers a day. They had a record of 710 mowers in one day. Look how massive this is. It's not one line, they've got multiple lines in here and people love it. I tell you what, the pride on people's faces when they're working here is absolutely amazing. They have quality control areas, quality test areas here as well. Just look how big this area is. So at the end of the day, the trip was a phenomenal success. We had a fantastic time. We had Jason from the Rebels, we had Michael Dean from the Freaks, you know, there's me and my YouTube channel. We just had a fantastic time. You know, learning the different areas. We got out there, we hit the corporate direct tools. We got out there and hit the closest Home Depot to the shop. We wanted to see how they were representing the brand in the store as well. We traveled around, we saw the million square foot, the 1.7 million square foot warehouses. We saw the headquarters. We got to see so much. Now, I would like to truly and sincerely uh, extend my appreciation to Ryobi, Jay Sarkar, um, you did a phenomenal job. The social media team, you all really rolled out the lithium green carpet for us. And it was a once in a lifetime experience and we truly appreciate it. We will continue to support you all as much as possible. Now, everyone, if you enjoyed this video, I tried to paint the best picture that I possibly could. Please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a little comment down there too. If you have questions, I will respond, I promise. And if you do subscribe, please hit that notification bell. It helps to know whenever I put up my little videos here and you get to see some cool tool testing. But until next time, everyone, take care. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> shuttle bus. We're going to Raya. We're going to Home Depot. One of these things is not like the other. Check this out! It was successful enough that they seemed like they were wanting to do another one, so... <laughs>